Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that provide context for today's public affairs issues. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the opening of the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum on July 1st, 1976. Leading up to the July 1st anniversary celebration, Real America will be showing a series of NASA films. Up next, Science Reporter, Food for Space Travelers, a half hour. When John Glenn got hungry during his three-orbit flight in 1962, he simply opened the visor on his helmet and popped a high-energy tablet into his mouth. This pill, a few sips of water, and an occasional squeezing of baby food from a toothpaste container were more than Glenn actually needed for the four and a half hours he was in orbit. The purpose of the meal was to find out whether man could even eat in a weightless condition. Mealtime aboard those early Mercury flights was hardly more than a light snack. Yet even at that, it was considerably more sophisticated than the brown paper bag and thermos diet common to the earliest in-flight feeding during World War II. Since 1961, food scientists have been hard at work studying and developing space foods and measuring their effects upon man. The problems, even for short flights, have been enormous. Yet as we continue to launch longer and longer missions into space, entirely new considerations must be met and dealt with in planning and providing food for space travelers. How space food scientists are doing this is our story today on Science Reporter. What is this? This is freeze-dried peaches. This must be meat over here, it looks Correct. like. Correct, that's meat and gravy. And some vegetables, I guess. Those are peas, and we have some corn. These are just samples of the type of items that are being used as freeze-dried items to right. be rehydrated. In addition, we have a great many bite-sized foods, which are compressed dense, high-calorie source of foods, typical of which we have fruit cake, mm -hmm. the sandwiches, beef sandwiches, and items like toast. Now how can you eat something like toast in a spacecraft without getting crumbs all over it? Well, we've had to Absolutely. devise a system for coating the toast with uh, a high melting fat coating, in this case, mm -hmm. to overcome the problem of crumbs and uh, disintegration. Another system which we are working on is actually packaging the bite in a, an edible film. Well, this isn't cellophane, then? No, by no means. This is an edible film made from a starch product and can be eaten as is. In fact, it's actually nutritious. Now you have here, uh, this is grapefruit drink, right? Eh? Yes, this is grapefruit drink. Five ounces of water, two to five minutes. What's that for? Well, it requires a certain length of time to ensure that the material is, the, in this case, the beverage is dissolved in the water. Mm -hmm. The package is needed to aid rehydration, and the one-way valve prevents water from flying around the capsule. If that's the one-way valve, then how do you um, drink the grapefruit juice? After it's rehydrated, the other end is cut, and a feeding tube is removed from the package, oh. where the astronaut inserts this directly in his mouth. Mm -hmm. You squeeze it like toothpaste? Correct, and mm -hmm. drinks the product actually quite delicious. Now what do you do with this after you're through? You can't very well throw it out the, the window. No, attached to the package is a germicide pill, which is inserted into the package after the product is eaten to prevent residual decomposition and uh, odor formation and fermentation and like. Then the package is merely wrapped up and put it in a disposal container. 